Uh, welcome to uh, lecture number 39 of this groundwater hydrology course. So, in the last lecture, uh, we have seen that regional scale uh, development of groundwater. In that one, uh, one important aspect is conjunctive use of surface water and groundwater. In this particular lecture, we will try to cover that aspect. So, our main uh, topic is modeling and management of groundwater and under that topic to be uh, to be covered is uh, conjunctive surface subsurface modeling of overland flow including flow through Vados zone. So, uh, we already know uh, that if this is our ground surface and this is our water table and this level is that our uh, lower portion or the lowermost portion of the phreatic aquifer, then this zone from starting from the water table to water table to this uh, bed level or uh, if it is uh, it of rocky nature, then we can say that this is impermeable, impermeable rock and this impermeable uh, starting from this impermeable rock to this water table level, we can say that this is our zone of saturation and above that there is a thin region which is uh, called as capillary zone and near to surface there exists another uh, region which is called as soil water zone. This is important for uh, plants and in between we have intermediate zone. Uh, or intermediate or uh, Vados zone. Sometimes this total uh, uh, region starting from water table to ground surface, this is called as uh, zone of aeration, zone of aeration or 
unsaturated zone or Vado's zone. So, in this particular lecture, we are uh, concerned about the modeling of this uh, zone of aeration or unsaturated zone or Vado's zone and the water above that uh, ground level or uh, ground surface, uh, ground surface. So, uh, what, what are the uh, processes or what is the interaction mechanism between this overland flow and subsurface flow that we will examine. So, uh, to, to model this particular problem, we need certain governing equations for flow uh, representation. So, for mathematical modeling, mathematical modeling we need uh, governing equations for surface water. Next, we need governing equation for subsurface water or in this particular case, this is for Vado's zone. zone flow. So, uh, the whole uh, problem can be represented as this is let us say we have ground surface which is not uh, always uh, straight, it is always having some slope. So, let us say this is x direction and uh, this is x direction which is a uh, uh, one dimensional thing and uh, which is in line with the uh, or in the same direction of the uh, our bed slope and we have vertical direction is z direction. This is for infiltration, infiltration from our overland flow. So, infiltration then we have subsurface flow two D model and our uh, surface flow is modeled as 1D. So, this is our surface flow this is 1D model and this is our surface water level and we have rainfall above that. So, Starting from rainfall, we have sub, uh, surface flow and this is our ground surface and uh, below we have this infiltration and uh, due to this infiltration only there will be subsurface flow that is 
2 D or 2 dimensional in nature. So, uh, considering a prismatic uh, channel, we can write our governing equation. So, we can write this surface flow equations surface flow equations. So, surface flow equations uh, first assumption is that uh, the surface flow occurs in prismatic channel of rectangular cross section. and flow second is flow is 1 D shallow water flow so in this case we can write our governing equation for surface water flow as del u by del t where uh, u is vector plus del f is vector by del x and s is another vector or we can say that these are column uh, matrices. So, in this case u is basically h and Q. Then we have this F, which is Q and Q square by H, G, H square by 2, and S. This is R minus I. G H S naught minus S F. So, term by term uh, we need to define uh, different uh, variables. So, H is flow depth in meters or any standard unit, Q is discharge per unit width meter square per second g is uh, acceleration due to gravity R is volumetric rate of rainfall per unit surface area this is meter per second. Then I is volumetric infiltration rate per unit area uh, 
bottom slope and SF is friction slope. So, these are the uh, key parameters. Now, energy slope or friction slope can be calculated using Darcy Weisbach formula. So, friction slope SF can be calculated using the formula SF equals to FD Q square 8 G H cube, where FD is the frictional resistance coefficient and this depends on instantaneous state of flow so uh, flow is laminar uh, uh, by assumption so we can write this fd equals to cl by re where this re is Reynolds number CL is the constant uh, which depends on on rainfall intensity FD uh, depends on rainfall uh, intensity and Reynolds number and this Reynolds number uh, can be calculated as Q by nu, uh, nu is kinematic viscosity of water. So, this is uh, all about the equations related to uh, surface flow. Now, subsurface flow equations are subsurface flow equations are uh, one is related to the uh, flow that is first assumption is 2D flow second assumption is uh, transient flow in an isotropic porous medium. So, uh, with the conservation principles, 
uh, uh, we can write this equation without any source or sink as del theta by del t del b x del x and this v z z equals to 0 where this theta is volumetric moisture content V x and V z these are Darcy uh, flow velocities Darcy flow velocity in x direction and this is Darcy flow velocity in y direction. So, in this case uh, x and z are distances along two uh, coordinate directions and z is taken uh, as positive downwards. So, uh, for Darcy's law the velocity components can be uh, calculated as this is for Darcy's law this our V x can be calculated as minus k psi del psi del x and V z can be calculated as minus k psi del psi by del z minus 1. This psi is pressure head, psi is pressure head and k psi this is unsaturated hydraulic conductivity So, uh, by substituting these two expressions uh, in our original uh, equation for uh, conservation of mass, this is from conservation of mass, we can get our final form of the equation that is del theta by del t equal to del x k psi del psi x and z this is k psi del psi by del z minus 1. So, this particular equation is uh, called as mixed form, mixed form equation because it includes both theta and psi in single relation uh, equation 
in single equation. So, uh, it is important to have uh, uh, the expression for uh, K psi which is unsaturated hydraulic conductivity and this psi k relationship dictates uh, the flow regime and this uh, moisture content and theta there is a relationship and interestingly uh, this k psi uh, or psi k relationship and psi theta relationships these are not uh, unique not unique. So, uh, it is always problem dependent and it is related to soil type and it varies with uh, problem to problem. To solve these two equations, uh, we can start uh, discretizing the governing equations or uh, for our uh, surface flow and subsurface flow. To have this, uh, first we need to have some kind of conceptual uh, definition of uh, surface flow and subsurface flow. So, uh, we can have situation like this where our this is x direction, this is z direction uh, although these are not having 90 degree, but approximately these are considered to be uh, 90 degree situations. Then we have regions like this where this is i th cell, this is i minus 1, this is i plus 1 and from here we have 1D flow, 1D subsurface flow surface flow and above that we have water level and 1D this is surface flow. And this is our ground surface. So, uh, with this uh, uh, picture in our mind, uh, we can start discretizing our uh, governing equations. So, first is surface flow. So, in surface flow, this is uh, can be uh, solved using some kind of predictor uh, corrector method for surface flow. So, our governing equation is 
del u del t plus del f del x equals to s. So, for that uh, the predicted step predictor step can be written uh, using uh, n and n and star level n is known time level this is a predictor level the star is basically predictor level. So, with this two levels uh, we can write this u i star equal to u i n minus del t by del x and this is f i plus half nth level and this is f i minus half this is again at nth level and this is del t s i this is also calculated at nth level. So, this represents this f at i plus half represents numerical flux through the cell phase between nodes i plus 1 and i and del x is basically grid spacing. All terms in the right hand side of this particular equation uh, are at known time level. Therefore, u star can be computed directly uh, or explicitly. So, we can write it as explicit set equation. So, uh, if uh, i plus half can be calculated as if i plus half equal to half f r plus f l minus u r minus u l. So, what is this? This is basically alpha is positive coefficient and if r is the flux computed uh, using information from the right hand side of the cell phase. So, f r is basically f 
flux computed with the information from right hand side and this is with the information from uh, left hand side of the cell face and U L and U R are obtained using a particular this U L and U R these are uh, calculated based on a particular uh, expression that is called as uh, M U uh, SCL approach, MUFCL is monotone upwind scheme for conservation law. So, under this, this UL is calculated as u i plus del u i and half and u r is calculated as u i plus 1 plus half uh, this is minus half del u i plus 1. Uh, there are several ways of calculating these two uh, uh, these two uh, variables. We can calculate it using uh, min mod approach that is called min mod approach. In that one, this del u i uh, is calculated as min mod of u i plus 1 minus u i and this is u i minus u minus 1. Uh, what is this min mod? min mod is defined as a b where a if modulus of a is less than b uh, modulus of b and a b is greater than 0 b if modulus of b is less than modulus of A and A B greater than 0 and 0 if A B less than equals to 0 or negative. This positive coefficient alpha in our previous expression is uh, determined the as uh, alpha should be greater than maximum of modulus of this q i divided by h i plus root over g h i and this is for for all i this is for all i that means considering all i's that is i uh, starting from 1 to n 1 to n n is the number of grid points we can calculate the minimum value of alpha so, alpha should be greater than this 
level. So, next step is corrector step. So, in this corrector step, the start values or predicted values are utilized to get the corrected value. So, in this one it involves n plus 1 level and star level, star level is already known level from our predictor step and n level is unknown level. So, in this one this u i n plus 1 this can be written as u i n th plus u i star minus del t del x this is f i plus half f i minus half star plus del t into s i this is at star level where uh, this f i plus half is calculated as f r star plus f l star minus alpha u r star minus u l star. So, u l and u r uh, this can be calculated using uh, that mean mode approach we have utilized in our predictor step and uh, we can solve uh, this particular equation. Uh, again it is explicit explicit equation. So, we can directly solve this. So, in this particular equation only the source term uh, is evaluated using a predicted value of h and q. So, uh, these two steps uh, we can calculate uh, using explicit equations and finally, we can get n plus 111 value for this one. So, what are the initial conditions? At t equals to 0 uh, initial boundary conditions. So, at t equals to 0 we need to consider uh, one h initial uh, depth and q initial although uh, it will have impact on the final solution, but we need to specify to uh, remove the discontinuity in the initial condition. So, 
uh, although it will have uh, impact on the final resu uh, results, uh, this can uh, eliminate the numerical singularity uh, of the solutions. So, uh, at this level we have i 2 to n minus 2 uh, n minus 1 we have internal nodes and for the first node uh, and the last node we can specify the boundary condition. So, values uh, of the variables at upstream and downstream ends domain are uh, using uh, determined by appropriate uh, uh, values. So, uh, discharge uh, at the upstream end is equal to 0. So, discharge at upstream end is equal to 0 uh, however one initial uh, discharge is specified to remove the singularity but it should be small uh, sufficiently small uh, compared to the other values. The flow depth at upstream, uh, we can say that flow depth at upstream uh, level uh, uh, can be determined using negative characteristics equations or uh, MOC or method of characteristics uh, the equation uh, and uh, downstream also this MOC can be utilized to get the levels for H for stability the current number condition or CFL condition this G by H plus root over G H that should be less than 1. The C n is called current number and in this particular problem delta t and delta x should be such that this g and h values uh, this should be less than 1. We can also say that this is actually maximum value for all i this is uh, g i uh, our this is uh, this is actually q q i h i plus root over g into h i less than equals to uh, 1. For subsurface flow uh, again uh, we need to discretize those equations subsurface flow So, in this one uh, one way is that uh, we can discretize our original equation that is theta i j because it is a two dimensional thing. So, theta i j at nth level this is basically 
v i plus half j bar uh, represents time averaged values and v i minus half j this is there plus we have i j plus half v i j minus half bar divided by del z equal to 0. So, uh, this v bar is basically w uh, into v n plus 1, 1 minus w v n and this is time waiting factor and v i j plus half this is calculated using our expression of Darcy's law this is j and psi is i j plus half psi i j and this is minus del z and divided by del z. So, k i j plus half is the unsaturated uh, hydraulic conductivity and uh, it should be evaluated at the inter block phases between i j plus half and i j. So, this is basically calculated based on i j plus half and i j. So, if we discretize our original uh, equation uh, in terms of this one that our v i j plus half and uh, if we utilize this in this equation and we can replace it here, then we will get the final equation as del t del x square minus k i plus half n plus uh, 1 psi i plus half uh, i plus 1 n plus 1 psi i j n plus 1 plus k i minus of j plus n psi i j n plus 1 psi i minus 1 n plus 1 j uh, and uh, next one is related to this z which is z square minus k i j plus half this is i plus half j i minus half j this is i j plus half and this is at psi j plus half n plus 1 minus psi i j at n plus 1 level del z plus k i j minus half both are at n plus 1 level psi i j n plus half minus psi i j minus half n plus 1 minus del z. So, uh, with this Uh, another term will be there that is theta i j n plus 1 minus theta i j n 1 minus w this is del t by del x this is v i plus half j n v i minus half j n minus 
1 minus w this is del z v i j plus half n minus v i j minus half n equal to 0. So, in this one the inter block hydraulic conductivity calculation is important. So, that is calculated as uh, gamma k psi i j plus 1 minus gamma k psi i j plus 1. So, gamma is uh, weight coefficient So, now uh, we can have boundary conditions. So, we can have flux type or pressure head type boundary condition. So, with this two boundary condition uh, we can model that and there will be interaction uh, at our uh, uh, with our concept that is for each cell there will be interaction between the surface and ground water we need to solve our surface water fl uh, subsurface flow at time level n. Then surface flow uh, uh, calculation and mm, we need to repeat this process to get the convergence and uh, we need to proceed for future time levels. This uh, subsurface flow equation can be solved using newton raphson technique. So, this is the method for solving our surface water ground water interaction, but uh, we have reached up to the zone of aeration or unsaturated zone. Uh, so, we need to consider uh, the saturated uh, interaction with the saturated zone. Uh, so, uh, maybe uh, in the next class uh, or next lecture we will discuss that aspect. Thank you.